Happy to be here today to uh, tell you about the University of Minnesota research with partially slotted flooring and litter systems for turkeys. Uh, much of this work has been uh, led by Dr. Sally Knoll in the Department of Animal Science, but she's unable to join us today. So I'm, it's my pleasure to uh, give you an update on what we've been uh, working on. So let me begin with some information about turkey production in Minnesota. Minnesota produces between 42 and 45 million birds per year. Uh, we have roughly about 450 turkey producers and about 600 turkey farms. Other top turkey producing states include uh, North Carolina, Arkansas, Indiana, Missouri, Virginia, Iowa, and California. The, um, the way turkeys are raised traditionally in Minnesota is uh, they're separated by sex and they're raised in two stages. The brooder barn uh, raises the birds from day old poults to about five or six weeks of age. And the birds are moved from the brooder barn to a grower, grower barn, grow out or finisher barn, where the uh, hens are raised to about 15 weeks of age and the toms are raised to about 21 weeks of age. Um, right now, both the uh, brooding barns and grower barns are normally using full litter. Wood shavings are the most common bedding, but other bedding options include straw, rice hulls, peanut hulls. And the uh, Turkey litter is uh, commonly used for multiple flocks. Some bedding is removed after each flock, but uh, complete removal and changing is done maybe every two to five years. The um, litter management is, a, uh, is important and it's a challenge. Um, basically, it's a moisture balance where the uh, farmers are balancing the spilled water and feces in the moisture, uh, spilled water and feces moisture with the moisture removed by the ventilation air. And the farmers are trying to avoid having wet litter and they are also trying to avoid having litter that's too dry and dusty. Uh, wet litter that gets packed together is often called caked litter. Caked litter is hard to dry out because uh, until it's broken up, it's, it's got a crust on it. And wet litter leads to more ammonia and uh, foot pad dermatitis or lesions on or inflammation of the foot pads. And then if we get too dry a litter, um, we get too much air, airborne dust. So litter is a challenge uh, in the management and especially at cold and damp weather. And farmers are also trying to avoid using excessive amounts of, of bedding litter and then trying to use too much energy to uh, dry it out if it gets wet. So it's a quite a balancing act that the producers are trying to, to manage there. We uh, got into the uh, slotted flooring research for turkeys uh, late in the 80s, um, published a few things in the 90s. We uh, started off just building some different uh, flooring materials and did those, conducted those in pen studies. So we made our own homemade uh, slotted flooring. And after a while, we uh, were able to get funding for a, a study where we put uh, PVC pipe flooring over a scraper system in an owner managed barn. Um, but that was owner managed and that person did not change the ventilation system. And so it was very, very dusty. And so they did not like the system and it was taken out. So we learned later that uh, ventilation management is important with uh, the slotted flooring system. So from, we had some other studies where we did four smaller studies with uh, pens and things, and we found some advantages and disadvantages. So we found uh, an increased body weight in about half of the studies. We decreased the ammonia, uh, decreased litter moisture content, and we reduced litter. Uh, uh, when we use slotted flooring, we reduced energy use if we manage the minimum, minimum ventilation correctly in the wintertime. And then the, some of the disadvantages, well, if we overventilated in the wintertime, we would uh, have dust. And that's what we had with the uh, commercial operation. We had more incidents of breast blisters and sometimes we'd have leg problems. But uh, we uh, are still interested in that process. Now there are some challenges that come when you go to a partially slotted flooring system from where the producers are with their full uh, litter systems. There's much more of an investment involved with putting in a slotted flooring and a, and a scraper system. There's gonna be more capital investment with that. Um, there's going to be, uh, now we've got uh, different kinds of commercial flooring available. And so there's the choice of, of those kinds of things. 
Another thing that will uh, impact the uh, turkey farmers is that they're going to now have to handle and store their manure differently. So they're used to a, um, a litter system where they have uh, just removed some at the, after each flock and then periodically do a complete clean. With a scraper system, they're going to have to uh, remove manure on a more regular basis and have a place to store it. Uh, in the 90s, we had issues with the birds roosting on the raised uh, slotted flooring, and that produced some breast blisters, and uh, you need to deal with that issue because that's uh, going to cause a problem in the processing plant as they try to uh, remove those um, de deformities. And, uh, but we believe that the uh, slotted flooring is going to be a uh, improvement in biosecurity. And so we think there's some opportunities there. And then it's also gonna be a change for the uh, producers relative to their ventilation. So again, when we have this, um, a lot of this moisture removed with the feces, they're gonna have a change of ventilation. So we came back with uh, slotted flooring again um, after the, uh, avian, highly pathogenic avian influenza in 2015, 2016. Minnesota was hit pretty hard. We had over 100 uh, highly pathogenic avian influenza sites and over 4.8 million birds, turkeys died or were euthanized. And so after that, uh, Dr. Noel uh, led an effort to do, get some more funding to do some more research on these partially slotted flooring, focusing more on the biosecurity emphasis. And so um, again, we're trying to separate the birds from the feces and we can reduce the bedding needed. But now there's a more commercial flooring available. And so we decided to go directly with that. And we did uh, conducted three different pen studies to assess bird behavior and performance and some flooring performance issues. And I'm gonna focus mainly on the flooring performance kinds of things and the bird performance and not the behavioral things. So we uh, had uh, six treatments. We had a control, which is a wood shavings, the traditional method. And then we had five different flooring options that we uh, commercially were available. We put about 25% of the floor is with slotted flooring and then the other 75% had wood shavings on there. We had two experiments, uh, one in the fall to a winter flock and then one to a summer and then to the early fall. The, um, Results here, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with this. Um, basically the first study, the birds did, performed a little bit better than the second study, but in all of the cases, uh, there was no significant difference between the floor treatments and the, and the control. And so we're pretty excited about those kinds of, kinds of results. So a little bit of a summary from that, then again, the similar live performance, uh, similar levels of breast defects, the similar litter moisture content across those flocks. Now, all of these uh, pens were in the same room, so there's not much variation going on there. A little bit of difference in one of the flooring types. So for experiment three, we decided to uh, just do two slotted flooring type materials and then compare that to fine shavings so that we would get more uh, replicates. And again, roughly 25% of the floor was, was slotted. And so here's some pictures of those different treatments. These are from cameras that were used to assess bird behavior. Um, again, uh, the feeders and waterers are over the slotted flooring. Our view is that uh, about two thirds of the uh, uh, feces is dropped really close to the feeders and waterers. And so that's, we do that. For these studies, there was um, a lot of measurements taken, uh, body weights, feed consumption, average daily gain, uh, breast blister button scores, breast blister scores, foot pad scores, feather condition, and some turkey gait uh, observations. The um, project also collected some processing plant evaluation data, uh, foot pad scores, and then the uh, carcass or part of the condemnations due to breast blisters or, or breast buttons. Here's some of the results, again, more on the performance kinds of things. Uh, bottom line is there was no statistical difference between the, uh, the different materials there with this. So um, here's some data on the litter moisture content. Um, most of the time there was not a statistical difference, but until we get to week 15 and week 17, that you see that the um, um, ones with the slotted flooring had a lower uh, moisture content and uh, all the way across the process. 
So we're seeing the behavior that we're expecting with this. So again, experiment th three, um, the two different kinds of slotted flooring and the control, similar life performance. Litter moisture was reduced with slotted floorings. There was still um, more trimming with the uh, slotted floor types of, of barns or flooring situation there. So we uh, were able to get funding for experiments four and five. This was a, a more of a, a pilot scale operation uh, on our research farm at the University of Minnesota. We chose to use the classic red rooster flooring. We put a scraper system under it and we installed this in half of a 40 foot by 90 foot turkey barn. There's a shallow gutter roughly nine to, 12, nine to 11 inches deep had it sloped to a shallow pit on the far end, and the pit was roughly seven and a half feet wide and 80 feet long. The slotted flooring was seven and a half feet by 64 feet. There's 16 feet that were covered with plywood and shavings, so we get about 27% uh, of uh, the slotted floor area that uh, was uh, slotted. Control treatment, again, was 100% shavings. We ran the scraper three times a day, and then that dumped into a shallow pit that was emptied every few days. Here's a picture of the uh, um, shallow pit that was put in there before the concrete bottom was installed. And on the far end is the uh, little pit that where it gets scraped to. And then the picture on the right is the scraper that was installed and uh, that was in the, uh, in the barn before we, uh, and this was probably between the flocks, the two flocks that were done with this. So here's a picture of the uh, uh, barn where we did the studies. Again, all the feeders and waterers are over the uh, slotted flooring. There's about 25% uh, slotted area. Off to the right is the uh, control area where it's 100% um, flooring with that. Some observations, uh, we've done this for two experiments. So the analysis is still going, going. There's a lot of data that's been collected with this but some preliminary observations was the, one of the things that we found was that the manure under the slats was drier than we were expecting. And so that made the uh, uh, scraper have to work a little harder than we had originally anticipated. We would also recommend a little deeper uh, gutter and, and then making sure there's some way to access that gutter for scraper works if you need to. Again, three times a day did make it work there. Uh, body weights and average daily gain was slightly better with the uh, slotted flooring. Whether it's going to be statistically different or not, we don't know yet. So our take-home message as we're going with this is, uh, you know, partially slotted flooring is a very promising uh, option to look for uh, in the future. It's going to uh, require a significant change in manure management for our turkey producers. It's going to require a, a capital investment for the slotted flooring. Um, ventilation changes are going to need to be there. We will be using less litter and less bedding needed and so there will be savings then down the road and if we can maintain the performance we think there's some real opportunities here. We've not done anything yet that's really documented the imp impact on the um, bird health with it. It's a, it's a team effort. Uh, Dr. Sally Knoll uh, Carol Cardona, Aaron Cordes, and myself, and then uh, Mariah Huberty, Jeannie Brannon, and Brian Hetchler, and the Turkey Research Staff. And the funding source with this is the uh, Depart Minnesota Department of Agriculture via the University of Minnesota Response to Avian Influenza.